Welcome back to the Digital Ledger, everybody. I wanted to make a quick pre-recorded video for you guys and talk about the fact that banks are continuing to march towards blockchain technology and DLT as well as the regulators. Now, in times like this, when the market's down, this is the kind of fundamental news I like to share and I like to talk about because even though it might not seem sexy like a moon launch, uh, it's at least uh, to me as an investor, uh, the kind of things that make me feel a lot better at night about what I've actually bought and what I hold. Okay, U.S. takes regulatory steps towards blockchain and technology adoption. I'll move through these things very quickly. They're short articles. The United States concerns about the rise of cryptocurrency use in illegal activities have only been growing as developments in the space continue to push the envelope. There is a global race to launch stable coins that could potentially be utilized by more than half of the world's population. Meanwhile, Facebook is committed to launching a Libra stablecoin that is regulatorily compliant and can be used by over 2.5 billion Facebook users. Russia is leading the world's first multinational stablecoin initiative, along with the Eurasian Economic Union and BRICS countries, which could be utilized by 41% of the world's population, and Tether launched an offshore yuan-pegged stablecoin dubbed CNHT, which can be transmitted person-to-person -person via blockchain-based mobile devices. Amid these developments, stringent U.S. federal laws and subsequent anti-money laundering measures adopted by traditional financial institutions are forcing sophisticated transnational organized syndicates and foreign adversaries such as China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran, as well as terrorist groups and other non-state actors to shift their movement of their illicit proceeds outside of the established financial industry. To avoid the scrutiny of U.S. law enforcement, these actors are increasingly employing non-traditional methods by moving crypto funds peer-to-peer -peer via mobile devices, crypto exchanges, and dark net markets into and out of the U.S. Uh, just want to interject here that, you know, I, I, I've been making a point for a long time on our, on our other channel, the Investment Perspective channel, and I want to make it here. Um, Listen to the terminology I use, crypto exchanges and dark net markets into and out of the U.S. Dark net markets. Now, there is a dark web that people refer to that is the unregulated side of the Internet, right? You know, if you go there, you run the risk of a lot of bad things happening and a lot of bad things take place on the dark net. And we have the legitimate web which is what we're using right now to communicate to one another. What is being established now in the larger narrative to understand, I believe, is the fact that they are creating the legitimized digital asset space for the Internet of Value, as well as a new financial monetary system globally. Accordingly, U.S. law enforcement and regulatory agencies have responded to these concerns by continuing law enforcement efforts establishing a cryptocurrency intelligence program and proposing new regulations and tax reporting requirements to pave the way for widespread adoption of blockchain technology. Basically reinforcing what I just said, legitimizing the space so we can have widespread adoption of blockchain technology, right? So then it goes into the law enforcement efforts here. Now, I'm not going to delve down into the rest of this. You get the point of this article here. Let's keep it moving. Clearstream, Credit Suisse, and, or Credit Suisse, however you say it, uh, the Texas-backed funds DLT blockchain series A. More support from the banks to head towards distributed blockchain, distributed ledger technology has secured a series A fund, Funding round from Clearstream, Credit uh, Swiss has management, Luxembourg uh, Stock Exchange, and the Texas Investment Managers. The amount of funding was not disclosed and proceeds will go towards developing the platform. This is good news again because I feel like we're watching them invest, literally invest in this new technology and they're moving towards it. So in, in a situation where we're seeing this down market, we're seeing the traditional markets collapsing, you know, it gets a little dicey 
You're not sure where to stand. Where to, where's the good ground to stand on? For me, personally, not financial advice, but when I see these things, it tells me that I'm an early investor and these things are headed in a path to support the investment that I've made. And that's exciting to me. Funds aimed at shared data for funds and fund managers in a permission fashion between the asset manager, distributor, and client investor. Initially, the solution was part of FundSquare, which in turn is a subsidiary of the Luxembourg Stock Exchange. In February last year, it announced a proof of, proof of concept and Portuguese investment distributor Banco Best. And just a month later, Italian fund manager announced it had tested the platform. I mean, this is very exciting. The Luxembourg Stock Exchange, right? We're talking about updating the systems, the platforms that are used for trade every single day. Do you think this is only going to happen there? No, it's going to happen to all the exchanges. In fact, I covered over a year ago how the CFTC said they were going to update their entire platform to DLT technology. So it's very exciting the things that we're seeing here. Okay, so let's go here and keep this going. We see the regulators continuing to move to a more acceptable uh, platform of proposed amendments for crypto startups. We know Hester Peirce here at the SEC has been very much a champion for crypto and being able to uh, get some rules from the SEC that help startups uh, launch their companies without the fear of being either fined or shut down because of, uh, you know, some ruling from the SEC that would come at them in a blind manner, because that's how new and that's how emerging this market is. So we're really starting to see that they're starting to craft the kind of framework that allows people to say, you know what, I will start a, comp a company up in this sector. I am excited about where things are going and I feel less and less like the regulators are against me and now they're working with me. Right. So very exciting here. Let's keep this moving. European financial institutions together launching a blockchain based investment platform. You don't say. Yeah. Significant European financial institutions are together launching a blockchain based platform for the investment fund industry. Isn't that interesting? The system was at first hatched at Luxembourg Stock Exchange. Well, damn. Isn't that what we just talked about? And it's offshoot fund square, which closely by the taxes investment managers and uh, Credit Suisse uh, management and Clearstream have declared a series A venture round. And this basically reinforces it. But what what it points out here to me and it's, uh, let me read this next section first and we'll talk about this. Funds at the DLT for cost reduction. It indicated that uh, 17th declaration, the funds DLT platform depends on Ethereum's blockchain and permits asset managers, asset servicers, distributors, and the supply chain to reduce the cost. The cost reduction is accomplished by expelling excessive activities while giving straightforwardness and permitting digital fund distribution, a Credit Suisse asset manager delegate told in an interview. So let me stop right there because... This just reinforces to me that it's just bigger. This is bigger than the other article even really suggested in my eyes. This is a much deeper network to the entire European financial institution. So I'm very excited about what's to come from all of this. And let's go one more step here. Banks have to embrace distributed ledger tech, even if it kills them. Wow. From Chuck Fried. Uh, the president and CEO of TXMQ. Now, I, I don't have, I, I'm not going to read this article because it's not, first of all, it's not that long and it doesn't need to be. You get the narrative at this point, right? You get the narrative here. And the narrative is exactly at the title of this article. Banks really do have to embrace the distributed ledger tech, even if it kills them. What does that really mean? Well, what that means to me is, is exactly what we've talked about a lot on the other channel investment perspectives, which is the fact that, you know, this technology cuts out the need for a third party. You and I can exchange funds now without having to involve a third party. 
This is going to constantly become more streamlined. This is going to constantly become more the normal as we move into development of these markets and the embracing of this tech. And it's exactly right. As this tech develops, as this tech is widely adopted, you are going to see not only the greatest financial paradigm shift in the history of mankind, you're going to see a reshaping of the entire financial industry and everything that is touched by money and transactions. One could really only guess the level and degree that the amount of changes could have because of this embracing and adoption of this tech. But this goes back to exactly what Jay Clayton, the chairman, said in a congressional hearing about the technology and the innovation. We can't fight it. Because if we do, it will innovate around us. We have to embrace it. Banks, I think, here have learned a valuable lesson. I'm going to use an analogy that uh, I think works beautifully which is the music industry. The music industry, when the internet first came along, found out about a company called Napster and file sharing, which it really is refers to as stealing music and giving it to someone else through email. That's how it started, right? The record industry at the time thumbed its nose at Napster and they had the opportunity to buy that tech and embrace it. And they said, forget about it. Go fly a kite. We don't need you. We're the record industry. Well, if you understand the music industry these days, the big record industry is not the big record industry anymore. And that's why you see people launching their music off of YouTube platforms and things of that nature, because it's much easier for them these, this day and age to not even go seek a record deal because those big record deals don't exist anymore. The reality is, is that the entire music industry was turned upside down and decentralized because of file sharing and has now graduated and grown into what we know to be streaming. All the favorite music you ever had in the world, you don't even need to own it anymore. You can just stream it, right? The same impact from the disruptive technology and innovation of DLT is in the process of doing exactly that to the entire financial banking sector world. Only this time, the banks are well aware of the lesson that happened to the music industry and those large record companies. They have decided we have to embrace it, just like Jay Clayton said. We will not be innovated around. And the only way to make ourselves continue to be relevant is to embrace distributed ledger technology. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it right there. Leave a comment below. Hit the like and subscribe. This is the new channel, The Digital Ledger. we got a lot of really great things coming your way. And I cannot wait to bring them all to you. Please, if you like this content, please share it, retweet it on any platform you're on, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, or otherwise. We appreciate all the help to help spread the news about this new channel and broaden the conversation with each and every one of you. I will catch you guys on the next one.